Ladies and gentlemen, lords, ladies and gentlemen, family, first citizen of Tower Hamlets, thank you very much for coming to celebrate a legend, a remarkable man, a hero. We're going to hear a lot about Reg today, but first we're going to listen to Michael Heseltine, who will set the Reg story in context, because it's also the 30th celebration of the formation of the LDDC. Thank you. It seems incredible to me that here we are 30 years later after the establishment of the London Docklands Development Corporation. Uh, I look back on it as one of the most exciting uh, projects in which I was involved in those uh, difficult times of the early 80s. Of course, there was also uh, an equivalent corporation in Liverpool, and then later, uh, I think under Nick Ridley, they were extended to other major British cities. The last wave of them, I think I actually introduced myself in Plymouth and Birmingham, but the difference then, it was by voluntary agreement with the local authorities, whereas the uh, early ones, I'm afraid, had to be imposed against fairly entrenched opposition. But. Again, with hindsight, we can see how exciting the whole project was to be. Uh, the East End of London has been transformed. Uh, there's still more to do, interestingly enough, in the Docklands Corporation area, but uh, so much has been done that it's now uh, a, a certainty that the rest will follow. Um, the, uh, what do I look back on? Well, I think without any doubt, um, the, some of the, the very big personalities that uh, uh, were involved. Um, I remember very clearly when I was first appointing people, I chose uh, Nigel Brooks as the, um, the chairman because he brought a private sector initiative and experience. Uh, and then I, if you like, matched him with Bob Mellish, who'd been a Labour um, housing minister uh, and, and a, a, a really much respected member of the House of Commons. And that pair were the chairman and deputy chairman. Uh, I also, although it was not um, uh, recognized as such, I was determined that there'd be a strong local input. Uh, I put the leaders of the local councils onto the uh, uh, board of directors so that although they didn't have control, they had a, a very significant influence. And that worked, I think, well. Indeed, one of them said to me afterwards it was a wonderful position to be on the board of directors where I could make constructive suggestions without that left-wing group of uh, councillors always peering over my shoulder. But undoubtedly, looking back, one of the stars, one of the, the great stars of the whole venture was Reg Ward. And he was um, a tough guy, uh, opinionated, d d determined, and he was going to do it his way. I mean, a very interesting example of that is that uh, we also included in parts of the corporation an enterprise zone. And one of the uh, criticisms that was made of the enterprise zones is that although they attracted industry uh, and there were very quick planning procedures, uh, the, um, the danger was that you just got people putting up sheds. Uh, Reg was having none of that. Reg saw the Docklands Corporation as a, an opportunity to develop quality. So he kept a control, which was never really intended in the enterprise zone concept. He kept a control over the quality of what was done. I, I think he was absolutely right, but I think Ridge would be the first to recognize that even he couldn't see that Canary Wharf and that incredible quality was going to be one of the uh, prime developments that flowed. I had a great regard for Reg. I think the, the, he's owed um, a, a very considerable debt. Indeed, if I, I, I did try in later years to get him uh, recognized in the public honors list. And I think it's one of the, 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 the criticisms of the machine that he never was so honored. He, he was a great character and did a great deal for the East End of London, but the officials didn't take to him. I never really knew why 
I suspect, because he actually was not in awe of them. He, he wasn't going to be told what to do. He had his own views and he was going to get on with it. Of course, he had the backing of Nigel Brokes and Bob Mellish. Um, and and the, the, the best thing you can possibly say is look around you, because he laid the foundations. Anyway, it's, it's wonderful that uh, you're all here gathered on this um, significant anniversary. I'm very sorry that I'm actually abroad and can't be with you. Um, just one last thought that you may like to have in mind, that uh, the big developments took place in the East End over those many years that have passed. Only one was pioneered by a British company, and that was the airport, the city airport. Uh, by Molem. But if you look at um, Canary Wharf, uh, it was the Reichman brothers, Canadians. If you look at what's happening in Stratford today, uh, it's an Australian development company. If you look what's happening to the Dome in Greenwich, it's Philip Anschluss, an American. If you think of Excel in the Royals, it was the Malaysians. It, it, it's a slightly worrying thought. Anyway, Let's rejoice that they all did it, and it's had such an amazing effect on the East End. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, a nice compliment there, and one of the greatest compliments that came uh, when I spoke to Ezra some time ago about Reg. He put it another way. He said Reg was a doer. He got on and did things. He did, didn't chat about them. And I think that's clearly true from what we've seen around us. You're simply